I've completely missed the direct sun, which would have been lovely talking about these because you can then see all the sparkles, but I have stuff to do, so the sun disappeared on me. Anyway, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for those who have voted for which keycaps for me to use. Unfortunately, as you can see, the cotton candy which you voted for didn't work out for me because I am so inexperienced with this. I was having a lot of trouble trying to fit in certain parts. I really dislike the standard one that came with it, which I fully intended not to touch because I thought I would love it. But then when it arrived, I just hated it so much. I just couldn't make the other keycap, keycap set that you voted for work with it. I won't bore you with all the details, but I'm pretty happy with this and I'm sure um, there's another board that will come which will fit that other uh, cotton candy much better now that I have a bit more experience with it, now that I know what I'm doing a bit more and I can avoid this type of stabilizer so that I could, you know, I don't have to worry about that inserts that I was trying to push into the keycap. Anyway, I could see you glazing over. I could see, I could sense I'm losing your attention. I just want to say thank you. And I am probably going to talk about keyboard in a different video or uh, maybe a different channel. I honestly don't know if I can handle another channel, but there it is. This is the unicorn barf. I have a Pokemon, a very lovely um, space bar that I'm going to replace this with as well because it just sounds really hollow. Anyway, but you are here for the pens. So in this video, I am going to do two things. One is simply to show you um, some of my earliest fountain pen, fountain pens, which I became introduced to, um, fountain pen makers rather, because this is not my part of my earlier pen collection. But Benu, uh, Benu, Benu, and Tuspi are two of the uh, pen makers who I encountered in my first year getting reintroduced to fountain pens after the age of eight. When I was eight years old in the late 70s, um, I was a primary school student in Indonesia. Uh, fountain pens were mandatory uh, when we were learning how to write cursive, and uh, we have to use fountain pens and it was a Parker, I remember that, and the ink was Pelican. Um, every time I see Pelican, I remember the ink, and every time I see fountain pens for a long, long time, Parker was the only fountain pen in my child's mind. So, right, so let's start with Twispy first. I actually have two more Twispy. I actually have, I've bought five Twispy so far, but I've given away one. Um, so the other two, is something like this called the iris but it's the vac filler the um, vacuum filler and i never take to it so i've never actually inked that and this is pretty new so i haven't inked this either but it's i'm going to and this is my first ever fountain pen um that i used again after the age of eight um back in the day i, th I still think i have that video uh, inking this and experiencing fountain pens again after so long. So I'll link that up here or at the end of this video. I actually purchased the uh, Kakuno Pilot first, but then it was making its way from Japan and it was after the pandemic, I think. So it was a bit slow. Usually things arrive within the week. Uh, I, I think even today, if you even hire private career companies, usually within a day, it will arrive here. Now it takes them two weeks. You know, the postal, international postal is just not the same. Um, so anyway, going back to this, so this is the mini aluminium model, aluminium parts there, as opposed to plastic like that one there, you could see. Let me do a close up. Right, okay. So you see that's plastic. This is aluminium. So this is the AL aluminium mini. I think I believe they call this faceted body that apparently is scratch resistant. Um, called the diamond series. So I suppose both of these are diamond series. This is 580. This is the mini version. Um, I have an, I had another one that's red, and I've given that away to uh, an enthusiast, pen enthusiast friend of mine, as well as two other Benu that I used to have in my collection that I've also given away to him. The Chameleon, which they have stopped making, sadly, and I'll talk a bit more about that later, and the Briolette, which they are still making. 
So the other two that I have, which is in storage somewhere because I'm in the middle, I was in the middle of moving when my mom became quite sick. And so I dropped everything, midway everything, dropped everything for the past three months. And only recently I started getting back into my own life again. The other two have been packed and I don't know where it is. I think it's either in storage or in one of those boxes somewhere. Um, the other two are, what was the other two? Okay, the VAC, one of these with this iris VAC with this type of aesthetic as well. This recolored aluminium here or stainless steel or whatever this is. The other one is my one and only eco model um, i think it's their golden horse uh, special edition which is basically rose gold and i believe Ro uh, golden horse is their film award in taiwan the twisties based in taiwan correct me if i'm wrong and i will correct myself down below if if uh, that is not correct and so the other one that i've given away is the red rose is this 580 diamond uh, red rose. The reason why I picked that um, and not other colors is because the band, Twisby's later models have colored band with uh, stainless steel Twisby on it, making the Twisby brand really prominent, and I don't like that. And so the red rose, I think it's probably one of the last ones of the color ones with the stainless steel, this silver uh, chrome band, where the Twisby um, brand isn't as prominent like here you can see uh, the branding is there but it's not so prominent because it's you know it's like against like you it's quite subtle and i prefer that like that it's the equivalent of blind stamping on on leather so it's there but it's not yelling at you and uh, the colored bands like the prussian blue for example the twisty is just the brand is just yelling at you in silver against that blue and i didn't like that but um, yeah, so I'm going to keep this forever because I'm sentimental. I quite like the color. I quite like the size. And this was my first. And this one is because you have all the colors in it. So I'm going to keep that. I see that as my workhorses, these two. And the Echo, when you hold the Echo, for some reason, after you're so used to the 580 Diamond, the Echo felt really, really light. And that's not necessarily bad, but I didn't like the hand feel of the Echo, so I haven't reached for it. I haven't inked that at all. This is new, so I haven't inked this either, but I will do so. And this one here, I've actually, I was so inexperienced that the ink dried up inside and causes clogging in the nib, and I'm still trying to fix that, so that really stressed me out. But you see the um, vacuum cap at the top there too. You see that darker part there that's like a, sorry about my dry skin there. You can see that darker part is protecting the nib from getting dry um, too soon. So, and the vacuum filler, I just never take to the vacuum filler. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's the shape of the pen. Maybe it's the hand feel. Maybe it's just, just something about the vacuum filler. I just never take to it. Um, I have some level of anxiety around my fountain pens, you know, afraid of ruining them, afraid of not cleaning them properly. And I think that plays a part in going into a filling system like the vacuum filling system that I'm not too familiar with. So for Twisby is all I have, and I'm very, very happy with them. I may sell the vacuum filler. I really don't know now that I have this... Um, particular aesthetic i tend to when i collect things i tend not to like having two aesthetic side by side even though you can collect whatever you want really and the golden horse i'm not too sure i'll ever use because i just don't like the the hand feel of it and although i like rose gold it's not particularly important to me to have you know um, fountain pen with rose gold um, trimming it doesn't in my personal collecting um criteria it doesn't uh, hold any special position so i may may not sell them i don't know if i do sell them uh, you'll see it in on my instagram at to my bookshelf so now we're moving to the venue so the two venue i have shown you i i think when i showed you my christmas holiday haul of some kind video a long long time ago it was january 2020 and i came back december 2019 from a trip to Singapore uh, where I had to rush my mother for surgery and I had caught several, not just one, 
several respiratory infections and my voice was nasally. I had a lung infection, a throat infection, a sinus infection, and this is just prior to COVID and made me think what I had caught back then. It really freaks me out now thinking about it. But anyway, in that video, I showed you two Ben Yu Pen as well as a Fisconti and a few other bits and bobs as an array of my first fountain pen uh, sort of, um, you know, adventure began there. And I've given both of them to the same friend who I gave my red twisty to, largely because after all these years, I haven't touched them. And so one is the Briolet, which is still um, in production. It has this kind of shape. What do you call this? Is a torpedo or a cigar shape with a band in the middle. And the band is really thin. This black band, which has become quite synonymous with Benu. And I, I will talk to you about that later in a minute. A very tiny um, black band, which you know, blend into the symmetry of the cigar shape quite beautifully. Again, I'll refer you to that video if I, maybe I'll post a photo here or I'll just link that video up there. The tiny black band is not intrusive because it's symmetry, it's in the middle, it's all around and there's symmetry here, symmetry there. So that's the briolette with the faceting. This one isn't faceted. The briolette is faceted here uh, like a diamond with this sort of uh, diamond shaped facets. The second, which they've stopped making, is called the Chameleon, I believe. And that is beautiful because the band, the plastic band, is thick. It's prominent. It's really handsome. It has all this uh, striation. What do you call it? Not striation. You have these lines across it, um, ribbed. It's ribbed and it's very, very thick with Benue in the middle of it. And again, it's a cigar torpedo, sym symmetrical shape like this. And then you see this black band in the middle of it. It just looked beautiful. Again, I've given it away because I wasn't too in love with the material and I wanted to go back to Benue to buy a chameleon with a different material. So if you have the chameleon range by Benue from Benue, I believe my particular material is called Jolly Chameleon. So if you have other type of material by uh, Chameleon by Benu, contact me, DM me on Instagram at Tumoy's Bookshelf. I might want to buy it off you. And the other one that's been discontinued is also another one of my favorite from them, which is the tattoo. And so these two, the Chameleon and the tattoo, are two of what I believe to be their more perfect designs and the fact that they've discontinued discontinued them was kind of, of a mystery to me but then very quickly it made a lot more sense to me because I realized that these ones are probably more expensive to produce so unless they're selling uh, a certain number it won't um, they won't be able to justify keeping their production and I also realized that Benu uh, is positioning themselves in a certain um, market price range. And that was confirmed with their recent announcement of an apology of for having to uh, increase their prices due to their relocation from Russia. Uh, today is end of August 2022, so you can um, do your own research in terms of what's happening in the world that involves Russia and in particular the Ukraine. And in that statement, uh, along with the apology, which we all understand, um, we all have to make a living. If we can't make enough margin, we can't survive. Um, they did state explicitly that their intention is to make fountain pens as affordable as possible. This means uh, that designs who are more demanding might not be able to continue production unless they become extra super popular, more popular than the average pens they have in stock. And I suspect the two who I thought was the most beautiful pens I've ever made have been discontinued for that reason. So for example, this tattoo, for whatever reason, this isn't their most popular. I don't know why. And um, it's far from perfect. So let's talk about that very quickly. Um, two things. One is this backside here, which just makes it look as if something is missing. But when you take this off and post it, you realize why it's created that way. Because when you do it this way, it creates this seamless line of the pen while 
posted, unlike most pens. Most pens will not have a seamless line like this. Most pens will go pen, 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 cap. Pen, 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 cap, right? And it won't sit properly except for the um, Sailor um, Pro Gear Mini because um, those ones, again, video up there or at the end of this video, but those are mini pens. So as soon as you screw it in, it becomes a regular size pen. This is a regular size pen, which which uh, when you cap it becomes quite ginormous, especially for a hand like mine. And I hold my pen like this and it's way up there. It just become in unusable for me. So that's two down downside for me personally. So the size of this is, let's put it here. There's one, two, three, four, five and a half inch. Um, and this about centimeters is about, let me see, um, one, two, three, four, five and a half square. And so one square is two centimeters. So about 10, 11, 10 and a half, 11 centimeters. Okay. So I'm, I'm using this as a measurement here, this craft um, mat here. And so of course I, I contacted Benu and I said, it's a, beautifully rendered design with all the sun is precisely sitting under the tip of the clip here and the design is not repeating it's literally one big tapestry all around it doesn't repeat itself one big tapestry all the way around um, this is swallow here and of course they say they will revisit this model but with gold nib so obviously well at least to me, my educated guess is that it sounds like they're moving this to a premium uh, tier, a premium, the, the pricing in terms of pricing strategy, because putting this together with these guys, I think they're losing money here because you can't price this the same as this. But then if you price them too high with a steel nib, no one's going to buy it. So they're moving way out. because They're neither here nor there. It becomes neither here nor there. I wonder if the chameleon um, suffered the same fate. I don't know. Now, why? So this is my first purchase. And then I hunt these two down. Uh, one from Canada. And this one is from a fellow... Uh, enthusiasts here local in New Zealand, different city, but same country. And I'm still looking for the blue and the yellow. So if you have them, if they are reasonably priced, please DM me on Instagram to my bookshelf. And um, we'll see if I, if I still have budget uh, budget for them. So these three, why did I point these ones as if this is less than? Let, let's just get this over and done with with this one here. I really love this. It is amazing design, very brave. And this reminds me of my Peranakan heritage. Um, again, I may put some photos here. I'll just put a link up there when I talk about uh, my Peranakan heritage. The kabaya or the the. Uh, clothing that my ancestors wear this it reminds me of that it's color upon color it's it's pattern against pattern they're very bold they're very flamboyant they're unapologetically i know that benu have had um people were saying things about benu that i thought was very unkind because i suppose the fountain pen community are largely a little bit more conservative in their aesthetic and in their taste of i don't know i don't know but I've seen some comments which I thought was, well, it's not your thing, but I can see why it's attractive, like this one here. I mean, it's really fun. You know, it's not exactly that, but I mean, come on now. You can't compare these two, really. It's like, I don't know, it's like wearing something to go clubbing and then wearing something to a wedding reception. And you honestly can't compare the two outfits. It's two separate occasions. It's apples and oranges. So... I remember thinking it was uncalled for and it was unfounded. Some of the snarky remarks about, about Benu pens, and I, I think they are great fun. So, however, let's get this one first. For example, here, let me close up. So, when I saw people reviewing this, I didn't see this minor detail, which, again, you know, the devil's in the detail and it bugs me. 
So here, it's just me. It's just me. I'm not saying this is good or bad. I'm simply sharing with you what I think and how I feel. And this is how I feel. Um, this is cut like this and it's beautiful. But this one here is flat. So here it's cut to pattern. But here it isn't cut to pattern. Again, there's that sense of... It's not so much the asymmetrical approach. Asymmetry can be very attractive. But there is that sense of it being unfinished. A bit like... A bit like that, that that edge hanging. You have all this thick line, and then suddenly, boom! There's this gap over here. It's almost as if something is missing here. Like my eyes keep going here and think that is something missing there. Here, it feels almost as if this has been cut, and someone forgot to cut this part of it. Can you see that? Oh, I don't know how to. Okay, let me point that here. Here. Compare that to here, it's cut to pattern, but over here it isn't cut to pattern here. Now I'm sure there's a way to make that happen, and I'm sure that takes more time and more money. The other thing, if you push this in, okay, you could see the opening, the gap there. Okay, let me point up with a nib because my hand is too thick. My finger is too thick. Okay, here, here. Yeah, so you see this line exposed here, and then you have a cut here to pattern, and then you see this one here as if somebody forgot to cut that to pattern. So, and so you have this line here and this line here. It's just messy, and I, in my mind, I thought when I bought this, this line here, this opening here, I thought would have fallen in here, in the middle here. So that the flowers, each flower bloom, each face, each bloom there, would sit right in the middle of the opening, of the separation between the body and the cap there. But it's not. It's, it's, the cap opens up like so. Okay. And again... It goes back to this kit. Now, let me show you the kit. The kit is would consist of this. And in a lot of instances, the kit involves the threading, these thread, which from what I heard from people who make pens themselves are one of the hardest because they can be quite unstable because those little fine things could crack. So threading here, this, this section, this thread here, and this thing here that forms a kit. Pens who do not use the kit. I heard from one maker based in the UK. She called her pens kitless. So I was just asking her, what do you mean kitless pens? What do you mean? I don't use kits. And I said, oh, but the others haven't used kit. Um, they don't use kits either, but they just call it simply hand-turned pens and everybody understood that everything is made from parts that none of them use ready-made kits that you can buy from in bulk from maybe China or somewhere, okay? So this is another kit here, the section, this one here, and this thing here, the threading here. So that forms a kit. Now, again, going back to that price point, using a kit would reduce significantly the time that you spend um, making those parts and reduce significantly the failure rate of those parts um, having to be thrown away and therefore charge back to the customer. Because if you have prototypes and you fail, all those failures have cost and those costs have to be recouped by being passed on to the customers. That's just how how the world works. So then these two here greatly annoy a lot of us where clearly you can see here that bit there, they clearly could use, they could make this top here look the same material here, yeah? Because it's not part of the kit, but this is part of a kit. So you have this sudden bam of black in the middle of this thing here. And as I said, in the briolette and in the chameleon, it works fine. It works well. 
So I would like very much to know why they've stopped making the chameleon. Um, so the kit is this. This. Plus. That. Okay. So now, if you're wondering, and I know a lot of you have been wondering, myself included, why on earth would you want to slap this awkward um, black band in the middle of this beautiful now credit is credit where credit's due this particular material i don't know how they make it without exposing the big chunks of sparkles uh, on the surface once those things are exposed on the surface they can create a crack because then the surface is not smooth anymore so and you can see here it's faceted so it means they haven't turned it like that now whether this is machine faceted or human i don't know but a lot of pen when they're faceted like this, they usually come on more price because it means you can't just put it in a machine and let it turn. Um, in a way, the same principle with a uh, turning table when you make pots, the table turn and you simply shape the object uh, going up and down. But the key is that it has to be symmetrical. Um, I know another um, pen, handmade pen, which consists of acrylic that is filled with little plants dried plants and dried flowers i know that it was difficult to make the threading of the threading like this because they crack because the object would protrude once spinned and and shaven on the surface the object inside would stick out like this creating a crack and some pen makers actually refuse to uh, work with such material because the failure rate is really high it means that you have to try again and again and it means that you spend a lot of time so luckily i found the maker of that particular dried flower um, blank that base material that is basically dried flower embedded in ac acrylics he isn't um he doesn't make a living out of his pens he's doing it as a hobby so he was more than happy to um, engage in the experiment I th at the time he was an air traffic controller so he does it in the weekend and after work as a hobby i'll put that up here or at the end of this video and so i've got to give it to Benu that somehow this is all smooth so i don't know how because the sparkles here are really chunky it means that each of this rod have to be polished or, or layered um, in a way that these big chunks isn't sticking its head out of the surface. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm making sense. Going back to the band, though, this is the kit. You could see it there. You could see it. One, two. Woo! Okay, I'm, I'm looking at this from a few finders. It's really hard. Two, three. That's the kit. So hopefully one day, Ben, you can do a kitless pen. But I suspect if that happens, the price will go further up. What I hope is that they could offer an option for a kitless pen. And you can buy it as an option with additional price or with a kit for less. I hope. I don't know. So I'll give you an example of a kitless pen. This. So this is one of my true um, precious possession as you can see here it's it's not um, it's not symmetrical at all and this is polished by hand this is shaped by hand every angle of it and it's this unique I mean look at that this is so cool um, this came from the UK um, I can't remember who created this I really must um, do an inventory soon but anyway so you look at this so this has been created this has been created from scratch including this oh, focus in right this one here so there's no separate kit here this is a whole this is a whole thing and this which he had to make as well from scratch. Whatever this material that he used, or maybe this is a different material because it's a little bit frosty here, I don't know. But this whole thing is made from scratch. So he would turn this one. He would shape, turn this one. I don't know how he does it, honestly. 
I think this is turned. It's probably been inserted. I have no idea. I have no idea. But you definitely cannot turn this because this is, look at the shape. I don't know how you turn this. Um, and this one here. Everything is made from scratch. So this is what they call kitless pen. Who made this? I have to look at my record and do an inventory. Um, the beauty of these handmade pens is that there's no branding. There's no nothing. It's just for the love of it. Um, but I must, for my own record, keep a record of who made this because this is this is just amazing. This pen, if all of my pen, I have to sell all of my pen. This is the one I would take to my grave. This one. Um, so that's one. Another example is this one here. Okay. So again, close up. This made from a whole material, a whole rod. This, okay, and this. This is all one body here. The whole thing is made from one rod. But that's just another example. Everything here, everything, is made from scratch. There's no kit, okay. So this is a kit. This is a kit. This is a kit. This is probably the closest to uh, the feeling of um, no kit, but this could be. But if it is a kit, it's blending beautifully with everything else here, which is why I suspect this was a little bit more expensive to make. Um, this potentially could be a kit, but just because it's black, it doesn't mean, you know, it's a kit. Um, I suspect just judging from this, it's probably made specifically for for the tattoo. I honestly don't know. Anyone who knows, feel free to comment down below. Because this black here, that's part of the body. Black here, finial, and all this. And you see here, you don't have a funny, starky, stick out like sore thumb Benu. The Benu is engraved in the model of the cap. This is one of their best design if I do say so myself because that's what I think anyway so um, you're not going to see a writing sample here because a lot of people have provided that and that's not what we're here for um, this is just a normal steel nib they're tuned beautifully they're right nicely but as far as I'm concerned one nib is about as variable as the next um, and about the same as the next. So, yeah, so this, we're looking forward to their next iteration of, of the tattoo. Um, this is very, very, like, look at this. This, this by right should create the edges, right? Is exposed here. But you could see this is covered because if you touch, this is smooth. But if you think about it, there are all these exposed edges. And so how do they do that? Anyone else know, please feel free to comment down below. And so if they're maintaining a certain price point, they have to cut the price somewhere. And I think that's what they have, this awkward black band, because then the kit would have been produced and um, mass produced and ready made, ready to use, and they can concentrate on creating this. So they, you see this part here, they could have done the same here. You see there's a cut there. They could have done the same here that would have increased the cost of this pen. So um, yeah, this is this is fun, but I'm not gonna lie, the black band really, really bugs me. And I know I'm not alone in that. So yeah, this spring, spring there. So this is not really a review of the pen, I'm just talking about, about them. And I think that's all I wanna say for the moment. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you again later.